tan, 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 tan. Hey! We're gonna roll outside. Wanna come? I can't. I'm watching carpet. Ow, but there's portable carpet. You got to be kidding. Hey, hey, hey. Have you ever heard of Dust Ball Kid? Not really. Well then, believe me, when I tell you there's carpet, you can watch outside. Dun, 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 dun. PSP. It's like carpet. You can watch outside. When it comes to my content, longtime viewers are pretty familiar with how I structure my videos. I usually begin with an anecdote about my life and how it relates to the game I'm going to be talking about, discuss some minor history about the game, its popularity, and usually musings about whether its quality still holds up, before I dive in and discuss my most recent playthrough of it, structuring it as a sort of long-form review that covers the full length of the game. Maybe throwing in some stale jokes and Family Guy style cutaway gags that keep you entertained. And then summing up my thoughts at the end of the video. Ending the video and answering the question about whether the game is still good or not. While that's pretty much how this video is structured, I'm going to get one thing out of the way, right at the beginning. Vice City Stories is amazing. I hate myself for never playing it until now. And I think you should absolutely go try it if you've never played it before. After you're done watching this video, of course. Also like, comment, subscribe. Honestly, I'd go as far to say that it beats the original Vice City in terms of quality. So let's discuss how this PSP game from 16 years ago is not only criminally underrated, but possibly one of the best Grand Theft Auto games. Before we return to the sunny shores of Vice City, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. If you've been a longtime viewer of my channel, you know I'm a big anime fan. Typically, when I'm spending the entire day at my desk editing a video, I usually like to watch some anime on my second monitor. While I tend to lean more towards shonen and action anime, as of late, I've been revisiting the films by Studio Ghibli. Most of what they put out are timeless classics, but I'd say my favorite from them is definitely Spirited Away. Disappointingly though, their movies aren't on Netflix anymore. Well, on American Netflix I should say as if I change my location to, oh, let's say, Italian Netflix, I can find Studio Ghibli's films and get back to my latest rewatch of Spirited Away. All thanks to Atlas VPN, and only for $1.83 a month too. Not only do I get my anime fix easy, but I also get the peace of mind knowing my info is safe thanks to the security and protection Atlas VPN provides. Grab Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price of just $1.83 per month, and receive an extra three months free. And you have a 30 day money back guarantee. My viewers can grab this deal by clicking the link in the description below or in the pinned comment. Protect your privacy and get the benefits of Atlas VPN today. Vice City Stories is set two years before the original Vice City. This time around, we're playing as Victor Vic Vance. You know, this guy. Vic was an extremely minor character in the original game, really only serving as motivation for his brother Lance to avenge his death. And that's about it. Hell, his name isn't even said in-game. Only the game's website at the time would confirm it was Victor. So while I'm sure the devs could have picked any character who appeared in Vice City to make the main protagonist of this game, Vic probably worked best since he was a blank slate, as they could characterize him and give him any story they liked and wouldn't have to worry too much about continuity as he dies in the first 10 minutes of the original game. Unlike the majority of GTA leads, Vic doesn't start the game as a criminal, and is in fact a soldier in the army. His motivation stems from wanting to earn money for his family, to afford the treatment for his sick brother Pete, and to support the woman who raised him and his brothers, his Aunt Enid. While I wouldn't characterize him as an outright good person, throughout the game Vic does try to avoid being a criminal, doesn't kill unless he needs to, and really hates dealing with drugs, for reasons I'll explain later. He's not in it for glory or to become some drug kingpin, but that doesn't stop him from being dragged into the antics of others, which happens almost immediately as he steps foot onto his army base and meets his commanding officer, Sergeant Jerry Martinez. Vic Vance reporting for duty, sir! <laughs> Relax, relax. Are you well? Yes, thank you, Sergeant. 
Good. In here, you can call me Jerry. Okay. Okay, Jerry. Huh? <laughs> now, Vic, tell me, why did you sign up, huh? To stay out of jail because you like getting shouted at, huh? What makes you polish your boots and put bullets in your guns in the hopes that maybe you get to shoot someone, huh? <laughs> I got a difficult family. I got responsibilities. What? Kids uh, abroad giving you shit, huh? <clears throat> no. Brothers. Uh, one is real sick. Asthma. And I gotta pay the bills. The other, well, maybe he's sick too, but in a different way. My mom's a mess. So you joined the army to get rich? Not exactly, but, you know, my dad, he came here from DR. We didn't have a lot of opportunities. You know, what else was I supposed to do? Why did you join up? To get rich! Why, why are you messing with me, Sergeant? <laughs> I ain't. Chill. Relax. Take a seat. Unlike Vic, who is completely serious and disciplined at first, Martinez is the complete opposite. Having a very jokey demeanor and lacking the professionalism you'd expect with his position in the army. Though Martinez is deceptively manipulative, as after grilling Vic for his motivations on joining the army, he doesn't waste time in trying to exploit him when finding out about his money troubles, pressuring Vic for a bit before convincing him to head to the airport to pick up a package for him. Vice City's map isn't all that different than it was in the original game, though this time around it starts us on the opposite island first. While I enjoyed Liberty City stories, I'll admit it did feel almost too like GTA 3, especially with how the other islands on the map were unlocked in the same order. So having Vic start on the opposite side of the map does help make his adventure feel different from Tommy Versetti's right off the bat. Leaving Fort Baxter, I arrive at the airport and meet Martinez's contact outside his jet, before we get on his boat and he gives me the stuff for my sergeant. I was confused at first why he didn't just give me the drugs on the plane, but then I realized this scene is here to establish something very important. You can swim in Vice City now. I don't think I brought it up at all in either video, but when I played Vice City for the channel, I could have sworn that you could swim in the game and a shark could eat you. As it turned out, I was actually thinking of Scarface the World is Yours, as that's something that can happen to Tony while bleeding in the water. While I never found Tommy's inability to swim all that annoying, I think it's a nice addition here, especially since the game was released two years after San Andreas. Swimming isn't as robust, unfortunately, as you can't dive underwater or swim for long before running out of stamina and drowning. But it helps mitigate some difficulty issues, as it doesn't feel like an automatic loss if I have to abandon a burning boat. Escaping with the package, I head back to Fort Baxter and hold on to the sergeant's drugs in Vix's barracks. Sure, no, no worries. Oh, look, I gotta go. The cavalry just turned up. Okay, bye. <clears throat> Corporal! What can I do for you? Listen, Jerry, you gotta get rid of that stuff. It's making me nervous. I'm not into drugs, and Chill I don't- Chill the fuck out, my friend. You're really getting on my nerves. Speaking to Martinez, he brushes off Vic's worries about the drugs he's holding on to being found, and sends him to collect money from a guy who sells guns for him. Heading down to the firing range to meet him, we're introduced to our old friend, Phil Cassidy. Must be Vic. Jerry told me about you. Hey, I used to be in the service. Despite this game being a prequel, Phil Cassidy bizarrely looks and sounds older than he does in Vice City. At first, I thought it was because his voice actor was recast, but as it turns out, it's the same guy. And it's Gary Busey of all people. Yeah, I kind of forgot to bring it up in that video, but if you've been watching my GTA videos, you'll know I'm pretty inconsistent with naming voice actors. It boils down to whether I knew who was voicing who in the first place, and if I remember to add it into my script. Don't you just love watching a content creator with such good consistency in his videos? Despite what I just said about him looking and sounding older, there are actually explanations for that. He only really looks older because of the sweet stash he's rocking in this game, and only sounds older because he's slightly more serious here. And he hasn't become the full-on drunk gun nut that we knew in Vice City yet. Phil has the cash he owes Martinez back at his old place. He asks Vic to drive him there before giving him a lesson on cholos. I've been having trouble with them cholo boys. Some of them have What the hell is a cholo? Bunch of Mexican gangbangers, bad boys, trying to take over all the gun running in town. Clearing the cholos out, 
I grab the cash and then bring it back to Martinez. Hey, Victor Vance! Wow, did anyone ever tell you got a really dumb name? No, no one's ever oh, mentioned that before. Oh my, look at that! Hey, is that legal? Can animals give consent? Checking in with our superior officer, he's in the mood to get laid and asks Vic to go pick up and bring back a hooker named Mary. Mary, yeah, oh, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. <laughs> Not quite sure how Martinez expects to sneak a hooker into an army base. Seems like it'd be smarter to just go out and visit her instead, but whatever. First, we'll have to go meet Bill Cassidy to pick up a gift before I can go looking for Mary. But before I do, I just want to point out this one little addition on the map. This wooden bridge here at this corner of the road that leads to the airport, it may seem insignificant, but it fixes a small annoyance I had with Vice City's map. Because of its location, going out to the airport always felt a little annoying, as there was only one way to get there, and it was easy to get turned around and go in circles trying to leave. But this bridge over the water, connecting it with the main landmass, makes it so much easier to come and go from this area without having to take the long way around. Meeting up with Phil, he gives us a car to pick up Marion, and after asking around in Viceport, another hooker leads us to a party where Mary is currently at. Taking out the guys with her, I drive her back to the army base and get busted as soon as I go through the game. Corporal Vance, would you care to explain why there's marijuana hidden under your bed? And who the Sam Hill is this? Hey buddy, listen, I charge more for groups. You brought a whore onto the base? Have you no shame, boy? Are you a moron? Is that it? Drugs, whores, you're out of here, soldier. You're a disgrace! And with that, Vic's time in the army comes to an end. I mean, I figured he wouldn't be a part of the army for long, but I didn't expect his service to amount to only the first 30 minutes of the game. Oh well. But it's not all bad, as Phil will let Vic stay at his old rundown place, and will offer him work now that he needs it. Dropping in on him, we get a glimpse of the drunk most of us are familiar with. Oh, put your hands where I'm seeing, boy. You think you can come here and rob me? Probably try to rape me? <laughs> I know you're kind. Phil, it's me, Vic, your brother in arms. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Lower your pants and prepare to cry. I'm going to give you a shotgun suppository. Whoa! <laughs> Phil! It's me, oh, Vic. Oh, my. Vic Vance. Vic, why didn't you say so? Good to see you, brother. Come here. <clears throat> Let me squeeze a fart out of you. He wants Vic to drive him around and look for a cholo to kill. And after he does, we'll use the pay and spray and drop him off back at his place. A simple mission that's really just a tutorial on how to do drive-bys and get rid of your wanted level. <sighs> Phil, uh, what's going on? You're a mess. I'm not drunk. I'm just resting my eyes. Okay. So, what's going on? <clears throat> Returning to Phil, he's a full-blown drunk mess this time, as the Cholos are about to blow up his warehouse full of boomshine. Since sitting around drunk isn't going to save his liquor, Vic convinces him to lead him to the warehouse so they can try and save his booze. They arrive just as the place catches fire, and Vic will have to use a forklift to load the liquor onto Phil's truck before the whole place explodes. And this mission sucks. A combination of the camera and the way the forklift handles makes it hard to navigate through the warehouse. And for every crate you successfully save, more of the warehouse collapses, blocking more and more of your path. You're also being timed, so if that heat bar reaches the end, it's game over. This wouldn't be so bad if the forklift didn't drive so slow, or didn't constantly get stuck on debris that drops, but the timer is strict and every second counts. So unless you know the right path to take and can keep the forklift from getting stuck, it's probably going to take you a few tries to beat this one. On the bright side, if you fail and wake up at the hospital, the game will give you a taxi to get back to Phil's. And even better, it brings back the trip skip feature from San Andreas, letting you skip the drive back to the warehouse. Returning to Phil afterwards, we're reunited with our shitty sergeant. Hey, look who it is, Victor Vance. What's going on, amigo? You want some smoke? Fuck you, Martinez. Relax. You're so fucking histrionic. It's like hanging out with a bitch on her period. You want me to fuck you up? Whatever, baby. Still as pleasant as always, I see. 
While it shouldn't be surprising, it turns out Martinez threw Vic under the bus to save his own ass when his weed was found. Despite being pissed, Vic can't do much about it now, as he's forced to fall in line and do more of Martinez's dirty work, since Phil works for him. He wants the pair to go after a truck carrying guns that they can flip and sell. First, Phil has Vic drive to a hotel to pick up some of his buddies for help, before the group goes after the truck and takes out its defense. Rather refreshingly, NPCs in this game have some really good accuracy. This isn't an All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! situation. After stealing the truck, we'll act as protection for Phil as he drives it back to his place. This wraps up missions for Phil Cassidy for now. In the meantime, he puts Vic in contact with his sister's husband, Marty. Oh, uh, hi. Marty ain't home or nothing. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, do you know when he's gonna be back? I don't know nothing. Excuse me. What do you want, boy? Nothing. Are you Marty? No. Now get gone, boy. Bitch! Bitch! Get your sorry ass out here! I thought I told you to clean this shit up! Marty, Mary Beth's been sick. Don't be using that baby as an excuse, Louise. Cause I'll hit her as well as you. Are you Louise? I'm a friend of Phil's. Friend of Phil's? Well, why don't you say so, boy? I'm Marty J. Williams. We're first introduced to Louise, Phil's sister, before meeting her oh-so-charming husband, Marty. While Martinez was an asshole, at least you can make the argument that he's funny and a bit entertaining at times. Marty, not so much, as he has no redeeming qualities whatsoever as just about every interaction with him has him verbally abusing his wife. Man, if Phil knew how this guy treats Louise, I'm sure he would have used him for target practice at the shooting range ages ago. Our first mission for Marty has Vic assisting with his protection racket, first by taking out some cholos attacking a store that pays Marty protection, before we go and turn the cholos tactics against them, smashing up a store that pays them protection, before killing them and making the owner pay Marty now instead. <laughs> hey, Louise. Hey, Vic. How you keeping? Uh, better now. Good. Returning to the trailer park, Vic gets friendly and chatty with Louise when he walks in on her doing aerobics. Before Marty spoils the mood by berating her and threatening to trick her out, causing Louise to get upset and leave to stay at her sister's place. Not that it bothers Marty that much. This time around, we're assisting Marty with his loan shark business as he has Vic go around and repossess the cars of people who may or may not owe him money. I mean, the last guy probably doesn't, as we're clearly stealing a van full of TVs. After finishing up, Louise is unlocked as a mission giver. But for now, I'll focus on working with her dirtbag husband. Returning to Marty, he says the Cholos are trying to muscle in on his repo business. So he supplies Vic with grenades to destroy their trucks before they go to work. Afterwards, he wants to muscle in and take over the Cholos' brothel first sending Vic to pick up a shotgun at the local gun store, before heading over to the Cholo's place of business to shoot up the car outside, killing the gang members who show up to retaliate, and finally going inside the business to finish everyone off and destroy their stuff. These missions for Marty have been an extended tutorial for Vice City's new and biggest mechanic, Empire Building. It works as a combo of the asset missions from Vice City and the gang turf mechanic from San Andreas as it allows you to take over businesses owned by rival gangs and then run your own business out of the spot you took over. Dotted across the map are 30 businesses you can take over and add to your empire, represented by these building icons. Who owns that business is represented by the color of the building. Blue belonging to Vic, yellow belonging to the Cholos, gray belonging to the bikers, red to the Sharks gang, and finally green which belongs to no one. Usually that's a business that you just finished taking down. Like the mission I did for Marty just now, every business takeover starts with destroying a car outside the business, killing the controlling gang as they spawn, and then going inside to kill the remaining members and destroying their stuff. You'll get a payout based on the size of the business you just took down, and then you can immediately rebuy it for Vic. You can then decide on what business you want to run. The first three options you get are a protection racket, loan shark, and prostitution racket. Then later on in the game, you can unlock three more business types but only after you discover a site that has one of those businesses. 
which are drug dealing, smuggling, and robbery. Once you've chosen what to invest in, you can choose the size of the venture, either a small, medium, or high roller. The bigger the venture, offering a bigger payout, but needing a bigger initial cost to build. After you've chosen your type of business and size, you have to wait a little bit until it's fully constructed. I'm not sure of the exact wait time, but from my playthrough, a new building was ready after doing a mission or skipping time ahead by saving. Once the building is fully built, you'll have gang members spawn in doors you can recruit for non-story missions, along with a notice board that lets you change the type and size of your business. Your ventures will now start generating money for you daily, paying out at 4 p.m. each day. Your pager telling you how much you've made that day. While initial payouts aren't bad, you'll want to increase your reputation with a given business type to make even more money, which means doing jobs for those ventures. Step inside your business, approach one of your gang members, and press up to start building it up. The first three business types work like side missions, similar to the vigilante, ambulance, or firefighter missions, where you have to do objectives of increasing difficulty levels. The protection racket is like the first mission for Marty, needing you to extort businesses or protect them from rival gangs. Lone Shark has you stealing cars or bikes to repossess. And Prostitution has you driving your hookers to meet their clients, occasionally killing Johns who don't pay, try to kill your girls, or try to kidnap them. There are 15 levels to each one, and thankfully it saves your progress so you don't have to do the whole thing in one go. And once you max it out, you don't have to go and do it again if you build another brothel or protection racket. Drug running, smuggling, and robbery work differently as they each have six levels that work closer to a regular mission. Drug running has you meet a client to sell drugs to, sometimes having to kill them if they double cross you or fighting a rival gang or the cops who interrupt the deal. Smuggling will have you get on a boat and collect drugs being dropped by a copter before getting it back to your warehouse within a time limit. Avoiding the cops, keeping the truck carrying the drugs intact, and outrunning any rival gangs chasing after you. And finally, robbery where you'll attempt to steal a money truck or a car carrying a briefcase full of cash, and then getting it back to your safe house. As far as I could tell, there wasn't a wrong or right place to build a business. I'm sure there's like an optimal way to make the max amount of cash each day, but I went at it blindly and had no problem with money. Outside of some early plot reasons, you're not forced to do empire building. The story isn't gatekept because you don't own enough businesses or something like in Vice City or San Andreas but the game does incentivize you to do at least a couple, as this game has absolutely terrible mission payouts, probably worse than GTA V. Things aren't exactly expensive in this game, but you realize quickly you don't have a lot of cash on hand, especially after you die enough times or try to buy a decent gun. And since taking over a business can be stupidly easy, especially later in the game, there really isn't a reason not to do it. The only real downside is that rival gangs can attack you at random after taking over one of their businesses, and that you occasionally do have to defend them. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, you'll get an alert that a business is under attack, with the damage meter slowly filling as you make your way to it. Once you arrive, you'll find your guys fighting off a rival gang, and you'll have to help them kill the attackers and fight off any cars filled with more of them as they arrive. Once you've fought them off, you'll have to pay to rebuild the building in order to get your usual business payout. The cost of repairs based on the size of your venture. You can lose ownership of a business, but it takes like four failed defenses of it to happen, and only if you don't bother to repair a business in the first place. And damaged businesses are represented by a damaged building icon on the map, so it's easy to spot where you have to put in repairs. And all these spots double as safe houses too, so you can head to one and save when you're ready to quit playing, though you can't change your clothes at one. Honestly, all these factors make Empire Building one of the best side activities to do in any GTA game. They're not overly difficult, Reputation levels are shared between the same businesses, you aren't forced to do them, the payout is high, and the cost of losing a fight is stupidly low. You unlock certain costumes while doing them, and even the most annoying aspect, defending your territory, is completely eliminated once you take over all 30 businesses. It's like Rockstar took a look at all the downsides to asset missions and gang takeovers, got rid of them completely, and gave enough benefits to make you want to do them. Even the problem of having too much money is mitigated a bit, as you have to pay bribes at the hospital and police station to get your weapons back, and have vehicles you can purchase at certain areas and safe houses. Vehicles you have to pay for every time you want to use it if you destroy it or lose it. Honestly, I'm amazed they didn't bring this back for future games. Sure, they probably would have needed to balance it better, but they really knocked it out of the park with Empire Building. 
Despite everything I just explained though, you can't technically start building your empire until you've done some more story missions. So let's wrap up this last mission for this annoying redneck. <laughs> so I said, what kind of name is Thorkill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he is, tough boy, the big man. <laughs> How high can you jump, boy? Boy? Oh, you're pretty tough, you inbred piece of white trash. Why don't you come down here and ask me that again, huh? I ain't scared of you. Oh, yeah? Then why is your voice cracking, boy? <laughs> all right, all right, enough. I ain't scared. You stop disturbing the goddamn neighbors with this bullshit. After things get a bit heated between Vic and one of Marty's other guys, we find out the boss man works part-time as a Discord mod. Anyway, I told him, you bring her over to me. I don't care if she's 14. I like her boobs. <laughs> Nothing crazy to this last mission. Just need to save the prostitutes the Cholos kidnapped. And with that, we can go check in on Marty's wife. Hey, Louise. Hey, Vic. How are you? Uh, getting better. Well, all right. Hey there. <laughs> you deserve good things, honey. Uh, maybe. Better than this shit. Hey, come on. Louise is down in the dumps due to her shitty lot in life, and is losing hope at the prospect of something better. Vic can't promise her a way out, but he relates his situation to her own, and how they both just have to keep going till they make it. This helps cheer her up a bit, and Vic asks her out on a date, and she accepts. Louise suggesting they go join a quad race back by the motor park. Damn. Asking out a married woman on a date and having that date right next to her husband's home? You got some serious balls, Vic Vance. Hope it doesn't backfire on you. This quad bike race sucks, by the way. It's just a two-lap race, but the quad handles so awkwardly. And it doesn't help that the checkpoints are spread out in a weird way, usually causing you to take a turn too wide. I somehow managed to beat it on the first try, but I'm pretty sure it's because the other bikers got stuck on some obstacles. Hey. Stop that. Sorry. It's... It's nothing. I'm just tired. Doesn't look like nothing. What's wrong? I left some of her things back at Marty's. Returning to Louise, despite her lovely date quad biking, she's more upset than before. Though mostly because she forgot her baby's things back at Marty's when she left. It's Vic to the rescue as the pair go back to Marty's. And fortunately, he isn't there. But his redneck buddies are. And they don't take kindly to Vic and Louise in these parts. So we kill them all. Dropping Louise back off at her sister's, she's finally starting to cheer up. Vic Vance! I never knew I could have such a good time. A great time? Oh yeah, we had a riot. And you were great! Well, I better get on inside. See you later. Aw, I'm really rooting for these two. Afterwards, Phil sends a message to go meet him. And unfortunately, it's the return of no one's favorite asshole. Phil, baby! Would I screw you over? Yeah, you would. Bullshit! I wouldn't! Not to you, not to a brother in arms. Come on, give me a hug. Ah, screw you over. Nah, you'd never screw anyone over, would you? Martinez and Phil are having a falling out, as Phil doesn't trust his boss anymore. Gee, I can't help but wonder why. The poor drunk gets strong-armed into doing another job for him, though, as Martinez sends him and Vic to go check on some merchandise of his. And to no one's surprise, it's a setup as the shitty sergeant set up an ambush to kill both Phil and Vic. After killing his would-be assassins and getting Phil back to his place in one piece, he decides to lay low for now to protect himself from Martinez, bringing an end to our time with Gary Busey. Well, we'll have to do something about Martinez sooner or later, but for now, let's go check in on Vic's trailer park princess. Who, who the fuck are you? Where's Louise? What? He, he took her! That, that animal, he took her! He's gonna do something wicked to her! Wait, who took her, and who are you? Mary Jo, her sister. Who are you? Vic, a friend. Returning to Louise's sister's place, we finally meet said sister, Mary Jo, and who I assume was probably the one watching her niece every time Louise went out with Vic. 
Unfortunately, she's in hysterics as Marty showed up and nabbed Louise, planning on forcing her to be a prostitute. Racing to the other trailer park, Marty will take off with Louise, heading towards his brothel. After killing even more of his redneck friends, Vic will give chase, ramming into Marty's truck until he finally stops and gets out, before putting that asshole down for good. With Louise saved and her husband dead, Vic finally has a chance to get more serious with her. Hope he doesn't blow it. Completing this mission also unlocks a new safe house, located at the compound that serves as Phil's junkyard in Vice City. Oh, and I unlocked the best costume in the entire game. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Worst place in the world, Rolling Heights Baller Country. Now I ain't represented Grove Street in five years, but the ballers won't give a shit. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this game has regular bicycles too. I've been thinking over what you said about me and the baby being better off without Marty, and I've got a plan. Why don't you take over Marty's business? I'm no gang boss. No, but you could be. Come on, we both need the cash, honey. Dropping in on Louise, now that Marty's dead, she suggests that Vic take over his businesses for himself. Louise, I like how you think. The pair will go recruit some guys and then go around killing the remaining members of Marty's redneck army taking complete control of his three businesses. This officially unlocks the empire building mechanic, so you can start driving around and taking over territory to start making that paper and pay for Pete's medical bills. On the topic of Vic's family, we unfortunately now have to deal with the arrival of his brother, Lance Vance. Hey bro! <laughs> Lance, hey. what are you doing here? You don't sound so pleased. I'm not so pleased. Thanks, bro. Who was you expecting? What a greeting, man. Not you. Someone useful. So what am I? A handicap, huh? Your dumb ass, low life, no good brother? Something like that. Yeah, well, I'm not the one who got kicked out of the army. No, you're the asshole who got kicked out of the Boy Scouts. Oh, come on, man. I come all this way to see you and you treat me like I got herpes. Maybe that's because your whole life you've gotten us into trouble. Oh, give me a break, man. I've changed. As a quick little reminder, Lance was a recurring friend and ally of Tommy's in the original Vice City. First working to solve his brother's murder, before working with Tommy to build a drug empire. He came off as this cool and level-headed guy. Well, at first anyways. But after consistent screw-ups while working with Tommy, his insecurity finally came to the surface, constantly whining about not getting his fair share or the respect he deserves, until he betrays Tommy to Sonny Ferrelli, and Tommy gave the last dance to Lance Vance. In this game, well, he's basically still that whiny little bitch, and just an overall obnoxious little brother, which seems really fitting. Just goes to show you that cool guy front he put up in the original game was all just an act. Oh, and his voice actor Philip Michael Thomas returned to voice him. Vic isn't all thrilled to have his brother visit and tag along in his ventures, but decides to give him a chance. The brotherly bonding gets cut short, unfortunately, as the Cholos show up looking for revenge on Vic. Lance will take the wheel as Vic shoots and kills their pursuers, driving all around Little Havana and Little Haiti until the car finally kicks it. You're never driving again. I had it with you, man. You put me off. You always treat me like a kid. Then finishing off the Cholos and dropping off Lance at his hotel. While technically this incident wasn't Lance's fault, I get the feeling things aren't going to be all that smooth with the Vance brothers working together. Things get worse as when we drop in on Louise, she fills us in that Vic's newly acquired brothel is currently burning to the ground. Instead of calling the fire department, Louise suggests that they get their own fire truck to put out the fire. Which is really, really stupid. Man, you can really tell I never do the firefighting missions in these games. Cause I am just god awful at putting out these flames. From learning the controls to figuring out how to put out the individual flames, I completely failed at this mission. I legit got frustrated and spent my time maxing out my prostitution racket reputation to give me a break before finally putting out the flames and then killing the arsonist. Lesson learned, do more of the side content in these games. Returning to Louise, the welfare office considers her a bad mother and are threatening to take her daughter. Considering she usually abandons her daughter at the drop of a hat to go help out Vic, they may have a point. But we can't let Vic's future family be torn apart. Let's give this welfare guy a piece of our mind. Well, actually, Louise thought of that already, 
and hired two guys to go kill the welfare man. So we have to save his life first and then threaten his life till he decides to leave Louise alone. This wraps up things for Vic's lady friend for now. And while I could help Lance, I'd rather delay that headache for as long as I can. So let's drop in on another familiar face from Vice City. Hey, you Umberto? Did somebody order a stripper? Excuse me? Because I like my bitches a bit less baldy. What? Are you a comedian, Frank? <laughs> hmm? No, no. <laughs> I'm a man, just like you. Uh-huh. Umberto Rubina. You must be that. <laughs> it's good old Umberto Rubina, leader of the Cuban street gang, and with Danny Trejo returning to voice him again. In the original game, you'd meet Umberto at his father's cafe, where he would talk a big game, but would usually come up with an excuse to not help his own gang. He also had a weird obsession with balls, and all of that is still the same here. Umberto and Marty were business partners, and while he doesn't care that Marty is dead, he won't work with Vic until he proves he's a real man, with big balls. So he sends Vic to pick up a package for him, but he's testing some other guys too. So it's a race to get it and then bring it back to him first. You don't have to actually get it first, as you can steal it off whoever has it by stopping their car and killing them. Oh, and the uh, important package we're grabbing for him? It's a dildo. Gracias, Vic. <laughs> I kiss you. Whoa, not today. Never change, Umberto. Never change. Returning back to his place, we get to watch him show off his pickup skills. Mm, you got some Cuban in you? <laughs> you look like you got some Cuban in you, lady. Uh, no, I'm from Ohio. Oh. <laughs> you want some Cuban in you, lady? No, like I told you, I'm a lesbian on a committed journey with my life partner. Real lady killer, that guy. Umberto lets us know that Martinez is starting shit in his neighborhood, sending the cholos out to cause chaos in Little Havana. So while Umberto tries and fails to bang the lesbian welfare lady, Vic and some of his boys will need to drive around and take care of the cholos. Got any balls? Coño, man, I didn't know. Have you? I've seen shit with more guts. You didn't say your father was going. Shut your mouth, lady boy. He's my daddy, and I love him. I can't believe you would do this, and you left him there to die. Returning to the big guy, we find him a sobbing mess. Turns out his dad is dying, or about to die, technically, as he went to go see a wrestling match at the stadium, and the cholos were spotted heading his way. And Umberto is being way too overdramatic to go get his dad, or send his guys to go get him. So it's up to Vic as the only intelligent person in the room to go save the old man. Picking up Alberto, you're on a timer to take him back to his cafe so he can open it up on time. Though it weirdly turns into a sort of stealth level. The old man has a bad heart, so if you drive too fast, or crash the car too often, you'll cause his heart to pop. Which doesn't sound too bad, but there are cholo patrols on the map, and if they spot you, they'll give chase and open fire, guaranteeing Alberto will die in seconds. So you have to keep an eye on the minibamp, avoid any streets with cholos on it, and be patient in waiting for them to go through an area. It's a nice little shakeup to the usual go drive here or go kill these guys missions. After saving Alberto, I decided to change up my wardrobe, trading out my CJ cosplay and order to LARP as Lewis from Left 4 Dead. Such a goddamn good series. I haven't played the games in like a decade maybe. Was really hoping Back for Blood would end up being better, but I don't know, man. I wasn't feeling it. Levels felt too long, and the characters weren't really doing it for me. Come on, Valve. Just make Left 4 Dead 3 already, you assholes. Or better bots so I can play solo easier, because none of my friends ever want to play Left 4 Dead. Anyways, what was I doing? Oh, right. Helping out Danny Trejo. So I ask you once more. Are you man? Yeah! yeah. Then why are you not like Ball? Because I totally am bad. Because that's something you ain't got, baby. I got a whole sack full here. Tons of them. Balls everywhere. Balls to spare. Oh man, he's certainly full of balls. <laughs> Honestly, I'm amazed they didn't put Danny Trejo and Scarface the world is yours. Considering Umberto's obsession with balls. He's trying to rally his boys in order to take down the Cholos once and for all. His speech sorta works. Mainly because the Cubans are just tired of hearing him talk about balls. 
The plan this time is for Vic to assist in raiding the Cholo's warehouse and stealing all their guns. While the Cubans are loading up, he'll act as their defense and kill any Cholos trying to stop them. Once all the guns are loaded, they leave the Cholos a surprise courtesy of Umberto. The Cholos are finished! Umberto Rubina says, you are a true friend. You can count on me for anything. I love you, man, like a son or a dog. With that, we say goodbye to Umberto Rubina and his giant balls. Time to finally rip off the band-aid and go hang out with Lance. I am Lance Vance, baby. You can trust me. Lance T. Vance, a T for truck. Great. <laughs> yeah, love. I love you, man. No, not in a funny way. <laughs> I ciao. We find him getting off the phone with his new boyfriend, and he fills us in that he's got the two of them a way of working with some big players in town. First, we'll drive to the local burger spot to call his contact Forbes, who wants us to retrieve an impounded car for him, but before the place randomly gets stormed by robbers, who I swiftly deal with. Too bad the cops don't see it that way and chase after us. Racism and all that. This mission is similar to one Tommy did where he had to get a bike back for the leader of the bikers, as we'll have to use a bike to jump up and over the roof of the impound lot in order to get inside, before killing the guards and escaping with the car. You'll now be able to bring back cars to the impound lot as a side activity to make some cash. Later on, Lance will call up and he'll introduce us to his contact, Brian Forbes. Of course. You can't kid a kid. <laughs> hey, Vic. Hey. Yo, bro, so, what's up? Vic, you want to hear about a little plan that is going to make us three very rich? Very rich. Mm -hmm. So what's the risk? Forbes looks a lot like Sonny Crockett from Miami Vice, which is appropriate considering Lance is based off his partner, Ricardo Tubbs. Though, unfortunately, they didn't get Don Johnson to voice him. The pair have cooked up a plan to steal some drugs off of some dealers. The plan is for Vic to act as a decoy to distract the cops, while those two get away with the real stuff. Call me crazy, but something about how Forbes sits there, looking concerned, makes me think this is going to go tits up. Arriving at the warehouse, the cops are already sitting on the place, and instantly take the bait when Vic drives out in the van. The goal is to survive and outrun the cops while maintaining your 3-star wanted level, the progress bar indicating how close Lance is to making his getaway. It can definitely feel daunting, but I accidentally cheesed it by driving around the airport roads, and then just driving onto the air mat where the cops refused to follow for some reason. After completing the mission, I returned to Forbes. And man, this dude is a giant. Like, he seriously towers over Vic. Like, Vic never really came off as short. He seemed to be about even height with everyone we've seen till now. It's only with Forbes that there's such an obvious difference. Lance soon shows up and points a gun at him. Turns out Forbes was an undercover cop this whole time. Man, that reveal was fast. Like, yeah, last mission hinted something was up with the guy, but you'd think we'd do a couple missions for him before learning the truth. He takes off before we can interrogate him. The money he got from selling the drugs now spilling all over the road. You'll have to stop his car and pull him out of it before all your cash is gone, with pedestrians slowing you down as they run into the street to collect the green. It can be tougher than it seems, as his car is insanely fast, and you have to find a way to pin his car down long enough that you can yank him out of it. Once they got him, the Vance brothers tie him up and hold him captive, unwilling to kill him just yet. Checking in on him and Lance right after, in order to try and save his skin, Forbes fills us in about a drug dealer bringing in a shipment by the water, one who might be willing to make a deal with the brothers, but he'll only meet one-on-one. -on -one. Driving down there, you'll watch the deal from a nearby building to keep an eye on Lance, and then have to run down to the water to save him when he gets attacked. You'll be too late and he'll get kidnapped, so you now have to follow his boat by land until it docks at a ship. Unfortunately, there's no steps leading onto the ship, so you have to get creative and drive a car up a ramp to land on the boat. From there, fight your way through the deck and then down below until you find and save Lance. He doesn't want to leave empty-handed though, so before you can leave the ship, you need to pick up a few packages of coke, kill the remaining guards, and finally escape. Hey! Make sure that no one can see it back there! Nice, Wills. I was in a hurry! The sooner I offload this coke, the better. This junk heap ain't doing Miami any favors. Hey, catch you later, bro. Hey, don't mind me, dick. While Lance should probably quit while he's ahead, 
he goes back to Forbes to get info about another drug shipment. And he points them to meet a contact at a nearby bar. And uh, the Vance brothers are a little out of place here. I think Forbes has fucked us again. Your kind ain't welcome here. I want to bear back the little one. Ah, shit. It's two for one at the boys club. Shit. Gay white supremacists. That's a new one. It's like that one Chappelle show sketch. Clearing out the bar, we return to Forbes who's managed to escape in the meantime. Chasing him around for a bit, I finally put an end to him. Adios, Don Johnson. Man, Forbes feels so underdeveloped. Just about everyone you work for in-game usually has a few hours of presence in the game. But Forbes was gone almost as soon as we met him. I'm wondering if they wanted to do more with him, and he ended up getting his role cut down for time or something. Meeting up with Lance at his hotel room, we finally learn the reason Vic has a problem with drugs. My problem? My problem is you're going to have us both killed because you're a moron. I told you not to get us in so deep. Ah, uh, shut up and grow some balls. What, tough guy? What did you say to me? <gasps> when will you grow a fucking brain? Hello, boys. Uh, Mom! Mom! Victor, put your brother down. What are you doing here, Mom? I'm cleaning up my act. I'm off the drugs for good. Here we go again. Can I get a drink, Lance, honey? Continuing the GTA series theme of terrible mothers, we're introduced to the boy's drug-addicted mom, Janet Vance. She was briefly mentioned in some dialogue by Vic, as apparently some of the money he sends home to support the family would be wasted on drugs by her. Her drug problems are presumably the reason their unseen brother Pete has medical issues, but that's never clearly stated. Janet claims to be clean and wants to reconnect with her sons, introducing them to her boyfriend, Javier. Dude, Javier, what are you doing, bro? I don't know you, but a young guy like you could easily do better than an old crackhead like Janet. The brothers don't want to deal with their mother and her boy toy for much longer, and leave for the airport to meet a contact of Lance's. The guy is getting out of the drug game, and is offering to sell the brothers a file about a big drug shipment, but you have to race to him before his flight leaves. Unfortunately, when we arrive, he already sold the file to someone else, so we gotta go find that guy, kill him and his guards, and take it from him, and then kill the bikers who show up wanting the file for themselves. Man, that file better be worth it. Back at Lance's hotel room, Vic has had enough and wants to get out while he can, frustrated at the idea of dealing drugs. But Lance manages to win his brother over once he finds out who they're stealing from next. Jerry Martinez. It's his coke. Uh, fuck it. You know what? Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That is a real man. Let's pop. Teaming up with some guys Lance recruited, they head down to the docks and kill the guys guarding the drug shipments. Martinez shows up soon after, and in a hunter helicopter of all things. Though you don't have to worry about him firing at you. Yet. At first you'll have to follow Lance and avoid destroying the truck, while also outrunning Martinez's men. Because of the height of your truck, I don't think you can even hit other cars if you try to drive by them. Come to think of it, what the hell was the point of those two guys we brought with us? They would have been a lot more helpful here protecting the truck while Vic drives. Eventually, as we try to cross the bridge, Martinez finally reappears, firing a volley of rockets that you need to avoid or else risk completely destroying the truck. But eventually, we make it to Lance's safe house and unlock the second portion of the map, Vice City Beach. With the entire map unlocked now, you'll be given a new safe house too. It's super swanky, but what's really dope is your own personal helipad, where you can buy a little chopper to fly with. I forgot to mention it until now, but flying is back in Vice City Stories after being missing from the last game. And man was it sorely missed. Vice City wouldn't be the same if I couldn't fly around its buildings and take in its scenery. Checking in with Lance, despite getting one over on Martinez, we may have actually dug ourselves even deeper. Yeah. Thanks for the coke, Martinez. <laughs> now you know how it feels to get fucked. Oh, you fucked us both, Vic. That coke you ripped off belonged to the Mendez brothers. I was just the shepherd. Now, we're all on their shit list, and the only way off is in a fucking bag. I'm turning states. I'm gonna ruin you, your brother, Mendez, everyone. Happy holidays. Lance! You useless degenerate asshole! Well, shit. Despite the looming threat of the Mendez brothers, and eventually the feds, 
Lance insists if they sell their drugs, they'll find a way to deal with both. So we head to the mall to meet a potential buyer, who just so happens to be filming a movie, and he could use our help with it. This is a shortcut to hell. This whole mission is a reference to George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, and has Vic filming a few scenes of him killing zombies. I'm not quite sure how they're pulling this off exactly, seeing as those zombies are other actors. There must be some really good special effects. Once we're finished, Lance secures the deal, and the guys head back to his apartment to pick up the drugs. <laughs> Mom! Mom! Hey, we're rich! <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? Ah, uh, never mind, man. Just get the yayo. Yeah, it's in the spare room. <laughs> oh, shit! What? It's gone! What? And Mom's stuff is gone, too! <laughs> oh, oh, Mom! Lance! Ain't that a bitch? I can't believe she took our coke! Robbing her sons of truckloads of coke? and skipping town? Looks like Janet Vance wins the title of Worst GTA Mom. Though I'm sure Trevor's mom will take the crown when I get to reviewing GTA 5. Well, looks like the guys are now in deep shit with the Mendez brothers, as demonstrated in the following mission when they attack Vic's businesses. Thankfully they only attack one, which depending on what business you do or don't own by this point, would be whatever is closest to where the mission started. Just kill everyone attacking you and keep Lance from dying. Afterwards, despite winning, Lance points out that it's only the beginning. This is the part of the game where your businesses will randomly be under attack. Usually it's pretty close by and you don't have to drive across the map to go save it. Though you don't have to drop what you're doing to protect it if you don't want to, as usually starting a mission cancels the attack. And like I mentioned earlier, it's cheap to fix your businesses. So a lot of the time I just ignored attacks and only showed up to pay for cleanup. This wraps up missions with Lance for now. So I've got the choice of dealing with the Mendez brothers, or this guy named Rennie. Let's go see what his deal is. Frankie, who is this gorgeous man? I don't know. Who are you? I'm looking for someone called Rennie. Ta-da! Uh, yeah. Spitz said you might want something. Something? Ah! Cocaine! Darling, I want cocaine! Mommy wants some snort and she wants it now! This eccentric fellow is Rennie Wesselmeyer a German film director, whose appearance I think is meant to be a combination of David Bowie and Boy George. Those are the vibes I'm getting anyhow. Despite seemingly being high on coke himself at the moment, we're not actually there to sell to him, but he can introduce us to people we can, but only if we do him a favor. He wants Vic to drive around Vice City and perform some stunts while Rennie records from a helicopter. It's technically a race in practice, as you have to drive around through different checkpoints, but there's also an action meter you need to keep filled by crashing into other stunt cars. Nothing to it. After I rue Rennie with my sick driving skills, it's time to sit down for a chat with the Mendez brothers. Ah, siblings, just like me and Diego. How apt. Listen, Mendez, we don't want no crap. Shit, that thing. Oh. Hey, mother. Listen, Vance brothers, you want me to kill you now? No problem. Or we can work together. Your call. Armando and Diego Mendez seem to be based off the Diaz brothers from Scarface, though technically those guys didn't appear in the movie. They were just mentioned in passing. They didn't make their full debut until the game. Armando himself has a resemblance to Alejandro Sosa, the main villain of the movie. The Mendez brothers grill the Vance brothers about who ripped them off. Which is a bit confusing, as I thought they already knew from Martinez, and when they attacked Vic's businesses before. Though this might just be them fishing to see if anyone else is involved, or to see if the Vance brothers are just fall guys for Martinez. Lance finds a chance to clear their names, pinning the whole thing on Martinez. But Armando won't bite unless he sees proof. So he cooks up a scheme to convince them that Martinez was actually an undercover cop all along. Since he told us that he'd be turning state to protect his own ass, the plan is to take photos of him with the feds and then use Forbes' ID to create a fake ID for Martinez. First, you'll head to the police station to take a photo of him, then follow his car down to the pier and snap some more photos before he leaves by boat. You'll then get a 4-star wanted level that you can't remove at the pay-in spray, so you have to outrun the cops to go to get Forbes' ID. 
and then meet Lance at the printworks. Despite the stupidity of the idea, it does seem to work for now, as Armando is on friendly terms with Vic the next time we drop in on him. This next mission for him is basically an empire building mission, as he wants Vic to go take over a drug operation belonging to the bikers. If you hadn't taken over a drug smuggling business by now, this will officially unlock it for you. Lance! Oh no! Lance, get over here and explain yourself! Shh! Stop acting like a child! Shh! Don't you shush me! Keep your voice down! No! You can barely tie your own shoelaces. You telling me how to behave? Will you shut up, you stupid gorilla? The place is bugged! The DA is on to us! Happy now! Dropping by to check on our idiot brother. It turns out Martinez wasn't lying about giving us up to the DEA. As according to Lance, his place and all of Vic's businesses are bugged and being monitored. Since it'd take too long to go through each business to find the bugs, Lance's big brain idea is to destroy the police antennas receiving the signal. Well, it's not the worst idea in the world. First, I'll pick up a free rocket launcher from ammunition, and then race to the first police station to blow up the antenna. From there, I can nab a police chopper and fly out to take out the other two. Though I do have to drop that 5-star wanted level in order to pass. Rennie will reach back out again, having found Vic a drug contact. But for now, it's back to the Mendez brothers. And we get our first conversation with Diego. Excuse me. Mr. Mendez. Armando, aquí! Tus amigos! Nice talking to you too, pal. <sighs> Armando wants us to take out some competition and kill some rival drug dealers pushing on his turf. The first guy is easy enough to take out, even with all his bodyguards. The second, not so much, as when you confront him, you're in the middle of a huge pool area with a bunch of his bikini bodyguards unloading on you. If you're not wearing armor or are low on health when you confront him, you could die fast if you don't run for cover in time. After you kill all his bodyguards, you then have to chase after him by quad bike while avoiding the grenades he's tossing. Despite the handling of the bike, it isn't too bad. Just make sure you have a machine gun on you to save yourself the headache of chasing him for long. Returning to Armando, he fills in Vic that the cops have confiscated one of their drug shipments and threatens to pin the drugs on him if he doesn't steal it back. Lovely. We get a little creative with getting them back though, as you'll make use of a chopper with a large magnet attached to yank the containers out of the compound. It's basically the same as that one mission in San Andreas, where CJ had to steal a money truck they could use for the casino heist. First, you'll grab a container right out of the compound, then the second from a police truck moving through town. Simple enough, but it's the last part that's annoying as one of Mendez's men is under attack and begs Vic for help to save him. But instead of killing the bikers chasing him, I have to use the magnet to lift his car to safety. And it is very finicky. A combination of him constantly moving, along with the way the magnet clips against his car, makes it so much harder to latch onto than it should. And this is one of the longer missions too, so if you fail and restart, you have to go and get those first two containers all over again. This will wrap up things for the Mendez brothers, so, time to go check in on that German weirdo, Renny. <laughs> Darling! You are here to lighten my heart. Uh, not exactly. I love you. I love this man! Kiss me! Hey, hey, give me a break. He tells us the contact he mentioned before needs assistance in moving a ton of coke. And heading down to the water, we're introduced to Gonzalez. He works for Colonel Cortez. Tommy's contact and friend in Vice City. Gonzalez himself actually showed up as a minor character, as Cortez found out he was skimming off the top and working with Diaz, so Tommy would end up killing him. Here, he's still loyal to him. Well, at first anyhow. The coke we're moving belongs to the colonel, and Gonzalez needs help protecting it as they move it by boat. You'll hop onto a chopper with two of Gonzalez's guys hanging off each side of the plane, and follow the boat while fighting off any attackers. The chopper comes with built-in machine guns, but honestly, it's better to just let the two goons do all the work, as they're insanely accurate at taking out all the other boats. The only time you need to step in is when an enemy chopper flies in to attack the boat. This is where I was glad swimming was in the game, as after my plane got shot down, 
Gonzalez was still able to get to safety while I was still in the water. Afterwards, he'll thank us for the help and we'll keep in touch when he has more work. So for now, it's time to go back to Rennie. He doesn't know? Uh, no. And let's keep it that way. Of course. He is an artist. The pressure could kill him. I mean, I perform well, knowing people want to drill me full of holes. But I am unique, darling. Darling! Hey, Rennie. Hi. Uh... Darling, this is darling. Darling, darling, wunderbar. So now we are acquainted, no? Who wants to umbam? Uh, I'm Vic. <sighs> All right, Barry, mate. He introduces us to Barry, who wants Vic's help in driving around and protecting his big client. Seems Barry borrowed $3 million from Giorgio Forelli and hasn't paid him back yet, so he's threatening to kill him and his client. While technically he doesn't show up in Vice City, Giorgio Forelli is mentioned, as one mission has Tommy going out to intimidate some jurors who were ruling on a trial for Giorgio Forelli. We'll first go with Barry to pick up a bulletproof limo, before heading to the meeting point to pick up his client. Predictably, it's ambushed. But after killing everyone, we'll meet Barry's client. Look, Barry, when I agreed to play Vice City, I didn't expect it to be my swan song. It's no problem, mate. Just some nutcase trying it on. Hey, aren't you? Phil, mate. Phil Collins. Let's do the meet and greet another time, I. Come on! Yeah, it's Phil fucking Collins. And he's playing himself, too. There's no voice impersonator here. I'm not gonna lie, this really surprised me. Like, I had no clue Phil Collins of all people was in a GTA game, let alone a prequel on the PSP. I think he's the first celebrity to play himself in Grand Theft Auto 2. I don't think I brought it up in that video, but when hitting up a comedy club in GTA 4, you can catch stand-ups from Ricky Gervais and Cat Williams. And, before anyone says it, no, I didn't forget about Dre. After I'm done being starstruck, I outrun the remaining hitmen and drop off Mr. Collins at his hotel. And as a cool bonus, we get to keep the bulletproof limo. And even better, if I end up destroying it, I can buy it again at Sunshine Autos. Meeting up with Rennie on what looks like the set of Castlevania, he needs me to be a stuntman again. It's the same as last time, as I drive around while he gets footage, first by jet ski, and then by motorcycle, ending the mission with this line. All because she can't get enough. Yeah, I really didn't get it. I thought it was just a pun because the cheese brand is named Cock. But apparently it's a parody of Cadbury milk tray ads that aired in the UK. Yeah, I've never heard of them. According to my analytics, approximately 10% of my audience is from the UK. So comment down below and tell me how accurate this mission is to those ads. Taking a break from Rennie, it's time to meet up with Gonzalez. We got a much simpler mission than usual. Just chatting away, playing some golf. It's like that mission in The Ballad of Gay Tony, where Rocco had Lewis hit golf balls at some guy to get him to talk. Only difference here is that it has a more explosive finale. <laughs> bueno, you bastard! No one sells me out! Remember how I said that Gonzalez was still loyal to the Colonel? Well, here's where he starts skimming off the top and selling products under his nose. He's arranged a deal to sell some coke and wants Vic to facilitate the deal. Alright, should be easy enough. What the fuck? You hit the van too hard, the drugs have gone everywhere. There's more in this dude than in the back. Quit whining, let's just get this shit up to the party on Starfish. We've got bitches waiting. Son of a bitch. Looks like we got ripped off. Worse, Vic is high out of his mind. The interface now activating coke vision, as everything around him moves super slow. It's basically like when you find one of those super pills in GTA 3 or Vice City that slows down the combat, just with a red filter. Gonzalez won't accept failure, so you have to move around in slow-mo the entire mission to find the drugs, kill the robbers, and drive back to the lockup. This wraps up our relationship with Gonzalez. He was a half-decent guy, all things considered. I almost feel bad for killing him with a chainsaw in Vice City. Almost. Heading back to the film studio, we're helping out Phil Collins again, and find out some interesting stuff about his manager Barry and Rennie. I've had Barry. Everyone has. Do what? I like a challenge. Phil is joking. 
Parry? Mm. Listen, Phil. <laughs> Stop taking the mic. Yes, last year in Monaco. What? Too much champagne. No, there wasn't. Too much love in the air. No, there wasn't. You better shoot it. It's lies, Phil. Due to the threats of the Ferrellis, Phil is justifiably concerned about his upcoming stadium concert. So Vic needs to head there and make sure it's safe. As it turns out, it is not in fact safe, as the entire place is filled with assassins. So I gotta clear them all out before Phil arrives. I'll be honest, this seemed like an impossible task at first, because this damn stadium is so big, and all the hitmen are so spread apart, it felt like it was taking forever to kill them in time. In fact, I failed because I wasn't fast enough. But it turns out, my dumbass is blind. Because there is a bike right here at the entrance I could have used to get the job done faster. Oof. People like me are why devs started putting yellow paint everywhere to tell you where to go in modern games. After tapping into my dormant Dave Mira BMX skills, I managed to kill the assassins in record time. But I'm not done quite yet, as the hitmen have armed a bomb downstairs to blow the place. So I gotta head down there and kill everyone. Though I don't disarm the bomb, instead just telling Barry to call the bomb disposal instead. Can't go blowing ourselves up by accident trying to shut it off, right? While it would be cool to hang out with Bill Collins some more, I have to go check in on my dumbass brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm Lance T. Vance, baby. T for tulips in Thailand. Great. <laughs> yeah, look, I gotta go. All right, <laughs> later. So, who was that? Oh, bro, that's just the accountant. He's getting us a better rate at cleaning the money. After his lively conversation with his accountant, he fills us in that someone is stealing their coke and that the Mendez brothers want us to find out who. Vic is of course frustrated, but he's got some other troubles on his mind. What are you talking about? What's wrong? Oh, man, it's just Louise. I, I really thought we had something, but we just don't get to see each other. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, relationships can be tough. Believe me, I know. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot about Louise. They were certainly building up towards something. But can't dwell on that now. We got coke thieves to catch. According to Lance, who's strangely hyperactive, has dilated pupils and a bit of white stuff on his stash, the bikers are most likely responsible for robbing them. Well, he's convinced me. We'll both hop into a helicopter with Lance being our gunman, while I fly us around to find the bikers making sure to keep the airplane level so he can actually hit them. I'm gonna tell you we're hit! Oh, shit! Let's! After a while, we push our luck and get shot down, with Lance falling to his death. Goodbye, Lance. You were a shitty brother, but I'll still avenge you. Well, I wish I could say that, but unfortunately my dreams are broken after I clear the building of bikers. Lance, are you there? Hey, Vic! Look what I found! You're alive! I thought you were dead. No, man! I landed on a few soft bikers! Now I got me a new bike! Yeah! Never mind that. Where's the stolen coke? Ah, uh, yeah! Uh, they probably sold it already, the bastards! I'll see you later, bro! Suspiciously, despite killing the bikers, according to the Mendez brothers, the coke is still disappearing. Better go check in with Lance. <laughs> Alright, baby! This is the Lance Vance Dance! You got to... Uh, Alright! Pop it and uh, lock it! Yeah! Woo! So this is where the coke is going? Up your nose? Hey, Vic! Hey, Vic. Uh, what are you doing here? You had me running around town like a psycho, and all the while you're siphoning it off for your personal use. You are unbelievable. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, look, can, can we talk about this later? Oh, <laughs> hey, Vic. <laughs> Shit. Louise, what the hell is going on? Well, uh, um, uh, bro. Hey, hey, bro, it ain't nothing like that. I wouldn't do that to you. I just needed something to take my mind off things. So you fucked my brother? No! no. We just get high together. God damn, you are so judgmental, like you're a damn saint or something. 
I can't believe this. The love of my life and my own brother getting high together. I feel so betrayed. Nice to finally have Louise back in the plot. Though when the hell did these two even meet? She kind of disappeared from the plot once Lance showed up. I guess she does technically help manage the old businesses we took from Marty, so they could have met that way. Either way, Vic ends up blowing it and going off on Luis, who storms off. Then he goes off on Lance, who broke the second rule of drug dealing. Don't get high on your own supply. Instead of getting his shit together, in typical Lance fashion, he throws a tantrum like a little bitch and starts tossing the coke out of a plane. So I have to chase after him and collect it. This is also the first and maybe only time I ran into a glitch while playing, as apparently on the PSP version of the game, the hovercraft won't move forward when you get in. You have to go into reverse first and it'll fix the controls. Random, but I figured I should bring it up because I was pretty confused on what happened here. After collecting the coke and checking in on Lance as he comes down from his high, Louise calls. First reminding Vic that he hasn't exactly been putting in work towards their relationship. She ain't wrong. But more importantly, that Martinez is back in town and has his thugs going after her. We'll have to race to the burger place where she got ambushed, and despite declaring she was going to fight them off herself, Vic still has to save her. Three cars left the area, so we have to hunt them down and find the right one with Louise inside, before she bleeds out. And once we do, we need to race her to the hospital in order to save her life. Martinez will send a page to taunt Vic about Louise, threatening to visit her again. Damn, can't wait to inevitably kill that guy. But with no leads on his whereabouts, it's time to start dealing with another familiar face. <laughs> so, you're Vic. Yeah. And you? You Diaz? No, I'm Santa Claus. I heard a lot about you. Mr. Big. Buddies with the Mendez. I don't think we're exactly friends. Whatever you say. I heard you wasn't exactly a load of laughs, amigo. A crack a fucking smile. It's Ricardo Diaz, the sort of main villain for the first half of Vice City, who Tommy and Lance work for until they find out that he was the one who ambushed the initial deal that screwed over Tommy and killed Vic. Allegedly. If you saw my Vice City video, it wasn't really confirmed that he did it, and there's enough evidence supporting the idea that Sonny Ferrelli was behind it all. Here, Diaz is still as unpleasant as he ever was and they got Louise Guzman back to voice him. Thanks to Rennie, he's heard about Vic's reputation and is willing to hire him for some work. Also, as it turns out, he's already well acquainted with our brother, Quentin. Remember like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes ago in the video where we helped Gonzalez move his drug boat? Well, Diaz wants us to go steal it since Gonzalez didn't pay him tribute to move it. Unfortunately, we don't know where they moved the drugs to. So Lance comes up with the great idea to stake out a strip club and see if one of Gonzalez's goons comes out so they can follow him. I don't know, that seems like a reach. Keep your eyes peeled. If you see one of Gonzalez's men, holla. This is nuts. There's no way we I don't believe it. That's one of his guys right there. Man, I'm good. <laughs> I scare myself sometimes. All right, whatever. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. First we'll tail him by car, then by jet ski, until eventually he leads us to the stilt houses off the coast. I'm pretty sure this is meant to be a stealth mission, having to get past the sentries and onto the drug boat, but I just snipe everyone and get the hell out of there. Yeah, unless this is Hitman, you're not going to force me to go in stealthy if I have the option not to. Perfectly normal segue for the 40% of you that got this far in the video, but uh, wanna see some videos on Hitman? Hmm? Blood money was the go. Shit, I'd even make a whole video defending Absolution. Comment down below. After I finish stealing the boat and fishing for future videos to cover for the channel, I return to Diaz who's cut himself a deal with the DEA. He'll supply them with a bunch of coke, and in exchange they'll give him a bunch of guns. You know, to cut down on crime or make them look good or something. I'm not here to question it or whatever real life event it's probably commenting on. I'm just a guy trying to pay for my barely mentioned other brother's medical bills. Taking Diaz's goons to the meeting, it ends up getting ambushed. You now have to kill the snipers before the DEA arrives, or they finish off all of Diaz's goons. This is one of those few missions where which version you play on is going to determine the difficulty. You're on the PS2? Well, dual analog should make this easy. On PSP like me? Well, get good, son. It's not that sniping is hard. Technically, it's easier because you can slow down the speed of your aiming. The problem is moving the camera. 
There's so many guys you have to kill in so little time. You really can't fumble around trying to move the camera to aim at everyone. The second analog stick just makes it so much faster than on the PSP. We have to stop, hold L, and then turn. It's not the hardest mission. That's probably still the forklift one. But it really is going to test your reflexes. Once the DEA arrives, you and whoever is left of Diaz's guys will need to get the truckload of guns back to his place. Without the truck getting destroyed. Returning to Diaz... As it turns out, the whole gun plan was a plot to turn Gonzalez into his bitch. As the guns we acquired will be passed on to Colonel Cortez, with the understanding that any side deals Gonzalez does from now on will only go through Diaz. Or else. Vic's job will be to make sure that Gonzalez makes it safely onto his flight, which means a very long turret section where you use a minigun from the plane to kill anyone trying to kill him. After ensuring Gonzalez's safety, the Mendez brothers asked that Vic and Lance make an appearance back at their mansion. Good news! We've repaid our debt to them and we're no longer in the shitter with them. But also bad news! They want us to get the hell out of town and give up all of Vic's businesses. Well, I don't care to do any of that. The Mendez brothers don't like our answer. You're done. Oh. You're obsolete. You know hey, look what? out, Vic! The mule! Oh. 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 Interestingly, after being knocked out, instead of waking up in hell, it turns out the Mendez brothers had us taken to some gas pipeline instead of just killing us and chopping us into pieces. Big mistake, as now I can work towards getting my revenge. After I save Lance. I have to run around now and turn off the pressure to the gas in order for Lance to move, while also fighting off Mendez's goons. In a recurring trend in just about every video of mine, I made this harder for myself than it really is as I got turned around with all the pipes and couldn't figure out how to proceed the right way. I'm trying my best, guys. Why you bully me? Escaping with Lance, I get the feeling things aren't going to get any easier now that we're back on the Mendez brothers' shit list. Dropping in on my brother, we have some familiar faces returning. The Mendez brothers have officially declared war on us, and so Lance has recruited our best buds Phil Cassidy and Umberto Rubina to back us up to protect our businesses. It's a pretty awesome moment, for about 5 seconds, until you realize those two will go protect some of our businesses off screen, while Vic and Lance protect three other ones. Oh yeah, it turns out I was wrong about the game not gatekeeping the story from you, as this mission only unlocks if you own 7 businesses. I didn't run into that wall myself, as I'd taken over like half the map by this point, but I found that out from the GTA wiki. But not factoring in the story required business takeovers, you technically only have to take over three businesses, and that takes like five minutes. So... After the game ruins its Avengers moment and I save my businesses with Lance, and only Lance, he fills us in that Martinez called and is planning to pay Louise a visit once she's out of the hospital. Since Vic still hasn't quite worked out his feelings for her, he races to the hospital to make sure she's okay. And the two make up. Louise? <laughs> You look good. Thanks. I feel good. You know, for a while I thought I'd lost you. I thought I'd lost you. Look, I was angry. I shouldn't have said what I did. Me neither. You want to do something fun? No business, just me and you. Oh, nuts. It's Lance. What the hell? Trapped in a burning building, bring a helicopter. What can I do? Business can be fun. There's a helicopter on the roof of the hospital. We could take that. Too bad they can't go on that date as Martinez played us and wanted to separate the brothers so he can rob them. Lance is stuck on a burning building. We'll need to rescue him before he burns to death, and then chase after the guys who took the money. Kill them, and land Lance safely on the boat, before taking my trailer park princess home. Louise! I'll call you real soon! Oh, okay! I'm kind of in the middle of a war right now. It's okay! I'll wait! I really do hope these two make it. Returning to Rennie, the Mendez brothers have marked him for death, since he helped us with all our deals. So he needs to get to the hospital in order to have a sex change, and then skip town. Alright then, feels a bit much, but apparently Rennie has done this several times before. First we have to keep the Mendez goons occupied and prevent them from finding out Rennie is gone. Once enough are dead, he'll message that he's been ambushed and pinned down at the Malibu club. I'll have to swoop in to save him and get him to safety to the hospital. Good luck Rennie. Don't cancel me on social media if I accidentally misgender you in the future. We're now nearing the end of the game, with only a handful of missions till the end. First, before we can go after them, 
we need to start chipping away at the Mendez brothers' empire. So Ricardo Diaz wants us to destroy their bearer bonds. How are we going to do that exactly? Well, it's Rocky IV related. Sort of. This Rob the Robot knockoff is the Mestabot, an all-in-one robot built for cleaning, service, and pleasure. Using some tech that Lance ordered, I have hacked and taken control of it, now able to use it to search for the bonds and destroy them. It's not a simple search and destroy job though, as I have to follow Armando's orders and complete the cleaning tasks he commands, or else he'll get suspicious and wreck the robot. In between orders for him, I can use the Mestabot's tracking feature to search for the safe and after finding it, I need to figure out the code to unlock it. I have zero idea where you're supposed to find the code, as every guide I look at just tells you the number outright and not its location, but it's 8423. The Mastabot! You lousy piece of crap! You've ruined me! Do you require a light? Thank you for your sacrifice, the Mastabot. I hope they honor your memory by putting you on PlayStation All-Stars. It's time to say goodbye to our buddy Rennie once and for all. And dropping by the hospital, they're definitely a brand new woman. Also, we're reunited with Barry and Phil Collins, who requests Vic's assistance one more time in protecting him during his live concert. We agree, and after dropping off Rennie at the airport, we head back to the stadium for a mission that is simultaneously one of the best missions in GTA, and one of its most annoying. As Phil Collins is about to perform, Vic spots someone up on the lighting rig above. And heading up there, he has to stop anyone he sees from cutting the cables to the lighting rig. It sounds simple on paper, but it isn't. Mainly because you have no weapons, and can only take them out with melee. And I'm not sure if it's because of the perspective shift or what, but your melee attacks get wonky during this mission. As when you run up to whoever is cutting a cable, Sometimes Vic won't lock onto them or use the right melee move to actually hit them. On top of that, other enemies will spawn and basically magnetize themselves to you, blocking your path to the guy cutting the cable. Oh, and you have to keep on going to stop them for like a solid 5 minutes. If they succeed 4 times, say goodbye to Phil Collins. Alright, all that sounds pretty shit. So where's the awesome part then? Well, the whole time you're doing this, Phil Collins is playing his concert. And in between bouts of taking out Hitmen, it'll cut to him performing, and he just happens to be singing in the air tonight, and it is awesome. They could have just had the song playing in the background, but no, they went out of their way and animated his performance. Like Phil himself being in the game, I had no idea he did a whole performance too. Yeah, it's just the audio from his live No Ticket Required concert, but still, it's amazing. I've always been a huge fan of Phil Collins and Genesis. Couldn't tell you when it started, probably after the first time I saw Tarzan and heard the soundtrack for that. So this really was a treat. I really wish I could play this entire performance for you guys, but I'd get instantly copyrighted. It's a great finale to that whole storyline, and really sells how underrated this game is. You would think this would have been spoiled everywhere online, but here I am in 2023, playing it for the first time and just finding out. Wild. After the mission is over, you can even rewatch the performance if you want for 6k. Totally worth it in my opinion. I gotta tell you, I was on a pretty big high after this mission, and it got deflated pretty fast due to what happens in the next mission. Dropping in on Lance, Vic is looking for Louise, finally trying to actually build the relationship. Her sister shows up right after, filling us in that she's been kidnapped by the Mendez brothers. Vic decides to end this once and for all, and despite his lazy ass brother trying to weasel out of saving her, he forces Lance to help. Though he finds the right motivation after his car gets blown up. Come on, move it, Lance! Man, we're wasting our time! The bitch is dead already! Armando's got two things to say! One, get out of ice now and the girl lives! And two, my car! <laughs> Like the last mission, it starts off very frustrating, entirely because of Lance. You have to chase after him and keep him from getting killed, while also taking out different waves of Mendez's goons. The problem is, Lance insists on driving as close to them as possible, and he isn't firing at them at all, 
just soaking up bullets. And because of that, it's extremely likely you'll end up hitting Lance or taking him out when you blow up the car. You start at a disadvantage as soon as the mission begins, as they'll all take off and get a good distance ahead of you until you can steal a car to catch up. There is a bike parked by a tree you can use, but it's not in your line of sight when the mission starts, so you're probably going to overlook it right away. Expect to redo this first part of the mission a lot of times because of that dumbass Lance. Once you keep him alive long enough, he'll storm Mendez's mansion on his own. You'll follow after him, killing all of the Mendez brothers goons on the way, until you enter the mansion for a final confrontation with Armando. Luis! Lance! Do you think you're hero enough to bring back the dead? Where are they, Armando? They're upstairs resting, in peace. Would you like to join them? If you've hurt them... Senor, I assure you, they didn't feel a thing. Unfortunately, the same will not be said of you. Like that one mission to kill Vincenzo in Liberty City Stories? The perspective changes and you'll have to kill Armando before he burns you alive. Fun fact, you can completely trivialize this fight if you did all the firefighting missions beforehand, as you'll be completely fireproof and take no damage from him. I think the devs may have planned for that, as he does summon some of his men to come in and help. Not that they do much, but he's still not that tough. If you have full armor and health, and use an assault rifle, you can kill him before he burns away enough of your health. Uh, Luis! Uh, hey, Vic. You came for me. No one ever really did much for me before. That's sweet of you. Hey, hey, come on. Let's, let's get you to a hospital. I don't think there's much point in that. Come on, Louise. We could have had something special. Yeah. No, we did have something special. Make sure Mary Jo takes care of my baby. <laughs> oh, Louise. Damn. I genuinely feel sad for Louise and Vic. Like the Phil Collins stuff, I had no clue she didn't make it. In Vice City, Lance has a throwaway line when talking to Tommy about how he wants a piece of his brother's old lady, which I took to mean he was referring to Louise, and that she and Vic got married before he died. But I guess not. If you watched my GTA 4 video, you'll remember I was pretty critical of Nico's and Kate's relationship, as it never did enough legwork to convince me they cared about each other. So when she dies in the revenge ending, I didn't really feel anything. It just didn't feel earned in my opinion. Here, not so much. Louise and Vic have had chemistry since the first time we saw them together. They did several missions together. He saved her from her abusive husband and was able to build a connection with her over their crappy lives. Even with her leaving the plot for a bit, she still mentioned and Vic is frustrated all this drug empire shit is keeping them separated. And even after having a brief falling out, he still comes back to save her. The two make up and really want to continue their relationship. To quote Vic, they really did have something special. So, it's heartbreaking that neither one ends up having a happy ending. Oh, and uh, Lance is still alive, obviously. But man, he really doesn't know how to shut up. Hey, I, Vic, I, I know you cared about her, man. But she wasn't right for you. Vic. Hey, Vic. Family's what matters. Oh, damn. All right. All right. Okay, I'm gonna make it. I can make it, I know I can, man. While Armando is six feet under, we still need to take care of Diego and Martinez while we're at it. Ricardo Diaz fills us in that Fort Baxter just came into possession of some attack helicopters and suggests to Vic to steal one and use it to ambush Diego's compound. Sounds utterly crazy, but if we're going to get revenge for Louise, we might as well go all out. Vic will head to Phil Cassidy for his help, who, like him, is grieving the loss of his sister. He jumps on board to help Vic, working as a distraction by ramming his truck full of booze into the gates of the fort, so Vic can sneak in from the side. Louise! Yeah! <laughs> Suck on that! 
You'll sneak around the base and make it to a control room to unlock the gate to the Hunter helicopter, before racing through the base to hijack it before it takes off. Bringing it back to Diaz, he gets the Hunter prepped and it's time for the final mission. It goes full-blown 80s action movie, as you'll head to the building where Diego and his men are located, using rockets and machine gun fire to sweep through the windows and kill his guards. After they manage to shoot you down, you'll land on the roof and start clearing each floor of goons searching for Diego. And partway through, a certain asshole arrives to settle the score. Looks like Vic's partying without me! Sweep the building! Flush that turn up to the roof so I can finish this! You'll now have to fight your way back up to the roof and take care of a helicopter firing at you until finally it's time to bring everything to an end. Ten hut! <laughs> Vic! I swear to God, I thought you were gonna salute me! Toss the gun! Fuck you! Vic, still so uptight. You know what your problem is? You're trying to be the good guy in a bad man's game! Huh? I thought you had potential. Turns out you're just another chump, like Mendez. Me cago en tu madre. Oh yeah, ese. Que hay de nuevo? Mete a la mierda. You first. It's an easier fight than expected. Both Martinez and Mendez don't move. And if you get far enough, they'll miss most of their shots. With that, it's over. Thanks for everything, Martinez. You are great help. Dude. And that was Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. God damn. Like I brought up at the beginning of the video, this game is incredible, and I really hate myself for having missed out on it. Liberty City Stories, which I really enjoyed, definitely felt like more of a portable game. Here, not so much. Everything just felt bigger and more ambitious, like a true console GTA game. It's more difficult missions, various NPCs, more side content, and a story that didn't just feel like Vice City again. Yeah, it doesn't have the scope of San Andreas, but I think it took the right lessons from each game in the trilogy to build something special. Like I said earlier, Empire Building combines the best aspects of asset missions and gang warfare, creating a compelling side activity that you actually have fun doing. Vic's bittersweet story had me a lot more invested than I expected. I wouldn't put it on the same level as Nico's story, but I still enjoyed it. Vic Vance is a breath of fresh air from your normal GTA protagonist. Someone trying to support his family and not involved in crime just to be a crime lord or something. Hell, half the crap he gets involved in is a result of other people's actions. And not really his own. So you can't help but feel sad he couldn't have some sort of happy ending with Louise. Even with the knowledge he dies at the opening of Vice City, it would have been comforting to know he got two good years with her at least. I don't know if I'd say he's my favorite of all the GTA leads. That's probably Luis Lopez but he's pretty high up there. It's crazy to me that more people don't talk about it. I figured since both PSP games got ported to PS2, they'd have more attention, but I guess not. 
it's not a perfect game for sure. Some missions feel like trial and error, get wonky with the controls, and gang attacks can be pretty annoying too, as a lot of the times they'd ambush me at the hospital just after killing me. But I walked away from the game seriously impressed. Like a lot of fans of GTA, these 10 years without a new game have really left me drained and desperate for a new game. And this one I overlooked hit the right checkboxes and provided a new and fresh experience. I'm not sure where I would rank this game in relation to the others. San Andreas is still my favorite overall, and GTA 4 easily a close second. I'd probably need to finish GTA 5 again, and maybe do some quick playthroughs of the other games, but right now Vice City Stories might take third place. I don't know, maybe once I've covered GTA 5 I'll make a tier list video ranking them or something. To sum up my thoughts, don't sleep on Vice City Stories. It's an incredible game, and equally as good as its console counterparts. If GTA 6 really does give us a modern day Vice City, I'm hoping they take some lessons from this game. Maybe bring back Empire Building or at least Phil Collins. Like Liberty City Stories, it deserves an updated port to modern consoles and PC. Just keep gross deep games away from it. Don't need another definitive edition. Vice City Stories is truly an underrated game and a fitting finale to the 3D era of GTA before we transition to the HD era with GTA 4. And that's the video. Thanks for watching. Man, I did not think I'd walk away from this game enjoying it as much as I did. I'm kind of curious about the other GTA game I haven't played, Chinatown Wars. What do you guys think? Should I cover that too? Let me know down below. I'm feeling refreshed after I took a week off for my birthday. For those curious, it was on the 18th, and I'm 33 years old now. I was going to joke about feeling old, but honestly I feel more active and energized in my 30s than I did in my 20s. Probably because I keep a gym routine now and basically pump energy drinks into my veins. For those curious, I've mentioned it a few times before, but Grand Theft Auto V is coming, it just won't happen till the summer. I'm just about wrapped up with pre-production on the video, which basically means I'm almost done with my casual playthrough of it. From the size and scope of the game, I can already feel that it's going to be as big if not bigger than my San Andreas video, so I'm going to be working on it in the background while still releasing my usual videos. I already have my next vid planned out, but I'm keeping it a surprise for a change. Afterwards, I have some ideas for what to do after that but I might pull you guys to see what you're interested in seeing. Oh, and since my Saints Row video performed so well, yes, of course I'm going to cover Saints Row 2. I've already played it on PC, but it's a bit of a mess, even with the Gentleman patch, so I think I'm just going to play it on my Xbox Series X like I did the first game. Well, this video is long enough as it is, so for anyone who's stuck to the end, thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video and comment down below. Did you play Vice City Stories before? Where do you rank it in comparison to the other games? And if you're new to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. If you want to see more of my GTA content, I'll link the playlist with all the games I've covered so far here at the end. And maybe check out the suggested video too. Who knows, you might like it. I'm Fuzzy Slippers, and I'll see you later. Peace.